What's going on guys? Got a super sweet video for you today. We're gonna to be looking at a new way, or maybe not new, but a super dope way to arrange your beats that I haven't seen a lot of like producers or beat makers do, at least not in the hip hop space. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And it's kind of interesting. It adds a lot of progression and natural sounding movement to your instrumental. And that way you don't have to jump in and uh, do your edits in the playlist or whatever. So kind of a new way, kind of a sweet way. And all we're gonna be using is this, uh, uh, MIDI, I'm going to be using uh, the Akai MPK Mini. You can use any controller you want. And even if you don't have a controller, you can still do this with your computer and keyboard. It's just a little bit more difficult, but we will look into that in the video. So let's jump in. Okay, what's up guys? Today I got a quick and interesting video. So as you can see, I have my uh, MIDI keyboard right here. Uh, I'm just using the Akai MPK Mini. I'm sure quite a few of you guys have this. If you're watching this, you probably have been making beats for a while or maybe just getting started and you, you don't necessarily need uh, a, a MIDI controller. It just does make it quite a bit easier. You can use your regular keyboard as well. Uh, but for today, I'm going to be using this. So what we're going to be talking about is um, making unique arrangements for your tracks um, by kind of playing it live or maybe not necessarily playing, but triggering clips live, uh, activating and deactivating um, in FL Studio performance mode. And I'm not going to go through exactly how to set this all up um, just because you know, that'll take me 25 minutes just to get through setting it up. So I'll, I'll show you the basics and then maybe at a later date, I'll do a full video on prepping this up. So, um, what I did here is like, let's just say I wrote this, uh, like 16 bar loop or whatever. Right. And I don't know how to arrange it or maybe creatively I'm having trouble or just don't have the energy or effort or whatever you to, you know, arrange it into a full track. Or maybe you want to do it different than usual. Maybe you don't want to just have, you know, intro chorus versus chorus versus chorus outro or whatever, or chorus bridge versus chorus, ver whatever, you know, like maybe you want to change it up or get something unique. So this is a way to do that. Um, what I have here is I just wrote this uh, little loop essentially, and I've had it all wrote to the mixer and kind of gently balanced out and now um i'm in performance mode so how to do that is you go to macros uh prepare for performance mode make sure you do a separate save first because this will arrange get rid of everything in your track except for the the clips so just uh prepare performance mode prepare for performance mode after you make a new save that will arrange everything over here you'll just drag everything into place and then it'll look like this so then what I did next is I just went into each track and changed it to latch and position sync auto. So what that means is when I'm clicking play, whenever I make a change, it means it's going to toggle it um, on or off. It's not going to, I don't have to hold it down. It's not going to re-trigger it. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So as you can see, I can toggle my clips. So if I want to toggle on my kick right now, I'll go to octave one. I'm going to press C zero. That's going to turn on my kick. And because I set them to auto sync, now when I turn on my snare, it's going to follow along in the same spot. And same with all these other parts. So yeah, that's uh, essentially what's happening there is these are all just, once they're in performance mode, I just set them to latch and auto sync. And that's really all you need to do. And then you can only toggle them while you're playing. Otherwise this remains as just a normal keyboard. Um, so the other thing too, is you can also link your MIDI controller up like normal to effects. So for example, on the bass here, I have a camel crusher distortion and all I did is link to controller and then so link to controller and I pushed this button. So now this button, as you can see, is toggling Camel Crusher. Um, and you can do that with any effects and you can do that with the knobs as well. Like say I have this compressor here, I could uh, link to controller and I could adjust this knob for the mix. So I want it all the way up for now. Um, and so what you could do is if you wanted to make these custom arrangements and record them um, without having to keep the stems or whatever, um, like if you just wanted a master track, you could just go into Edison and have it set to record on input. And then, uh, you know, as soon as you go to play or do your performance or whatever, it would capture that whole master track and you'd have a finished track uh, from start to finish. 
Um, it would give you more of a flow because you wouldn't just be having, you know, clips organized and you don't have to edit everything because you can kind of make these decisions on the fly so you get a bit more of a fluid arrangement. Um, you know, you could also set these all to track mode record and record them all individually. You know, if you wanted to keep the beat for track out reasons, if you wanted to send it out to, um, you know, rappers or performers, artists or singers or whatever, or remixers, they might want the um, original stems. Uh, that being said... Um, you know, for this video, we're just going to be doing a master track just to show you what it sounds like. So I'm going to show you a demonstration and hopefully this guy's, this kind of helps you guys out. And if it's something you're interested in, I'll do a full tutorial on how to set this up because it is a bit of a pain, but let's just jump into it. So we're going to go Edison, record on input. So now as soon as it hears sound, it's going to be start recording the master, master track. And we're going to mute all of these except for muted guitar because that's what I want the track to start off with. Now on my MIDI controller, so what's what's happening here on my MIDI controller is each one of these is triggered by a di different octave. So these pads, I'm actually not using them because these are just whole uh, whole clips. If these were chopped up, I could use the in-between notes, like for example, C and then C sharp and D and then D sharp and then E and then F and then F sharp would trigger a different section, but because I don't have any sections, it's just the octaves. So. C0 is activating this track, C1 is activating this track, C2 is activating this track, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and you know, so that's how I have it set up for now. So what I want to do is I want uh, the muted guitar to come in first, and I'm on my MIDI controller, I'm going all the way down, hitting octave to zero, so that when I click this one, I'm going to start with the kick, just so I know where I'm at. There's a hundred ways you could set this up and edit your MIDI controller, but that's so beyond the scope of this video and it doesn't have max support and there's a bunch of different issues so i'll get into that at a later date but for now let's just jump into it so i have kick selected right now and muted guitar on so when i hit play i'm gonna scroll up and i'm gonna bring in my main guitar and then i'm gonna bring in my hat and then snare and then kick and then my bass then my choirs then i'm gonna do some distortion and then i'm gonna bring in the lead metal guitar so let's just see how that sounds All right, let's bring in the kick. Turn the distortion off first. Choir. Gonna bring in the distortion halfway through. We're gonna bring in the metal guitar in the last uh, bar here. Let's cut the hats out for a bit. Distortion off after this. Let's bring that hat back in. And metal guitar off. Now choirs. And then we're gonna bring the distortion back in. Get rid of the kick for a second and the distortion at the same time. Now let's get the rid of the bass. And then we're going to get rid of the snare. And then that could be our outro. Now 
And then I just stopped it and the reverb is going to ride out. And then what we'll do now is we'll go into Edison and we'll stop it. And so yeah, there now we have our track in Edison. What we can do is uh, we can save this and we can just drag it out. And now we have a full track. So let's just take a listen here um, in not performance mode. And this is our final result after I drag it out from Edison. So as you can see, I capture our whole performance and now we have a kind of a unique arranged track and you know, uh, it, it's not bad actually. Like, it gives it a nice little flow. It feels very, feels very natural. Like kind of progressive house or progressive dance, where elements kind of just keep coming in and being added and subtractive. Um, and I think that's an interesting way that I don't think enough people kind of use in like the hip hop space. So hopefully this got, uh, helped you guys out or like at least gave you some inspiration and ideas. Um, if you like this video and you do want to see the setup for performance mode, let me know and I will definitely uh, do a tutorial on that because it is a bit complicated. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take it easy and I'll see you guys in the next one.